Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be my out of box review for the Premium Bandai, a Master Grade Age 2 normal SP version or a Special Forces version. Uh, so yeah, this was a P Bandai kit and basically it's just a white version of the regular normal Age 2 normal. Uh, so there's really nothing too much new to this except for one new part which is just the new pilot figure that we have for it. Otherwise, this is just the same kit, just all in white here. That might be boring for some people. Personally, I really like the look of this kit all in white. I think it looks really cool, so that's why between the two, I would have rather got this one. Of course, if you just get the regular kit and paint it white, it's exactly the same thing, minus the pilot figure. But uh, I had the chance to get this, so I thought, just go ahead and get this white one. It's very cool. I like it a lot. And in this review, of course, we'll go through all the normal things, articulation and weapons accessories, and also the transformation. It does transform, so we'll check that out. Uh, so this review will basically count as a review of the regular Master Grade Age 2 normal, because I don't think I'll ever get that kit and review it separately. This one will just count as both, the Premium Bandai version and that. So if you do paint your kits, there's not really too much reason to pay extra for this premium Bandai version of this one. I think it's really cool though, so let's check it out. Alright, so let's talk about what's included with the kit here. First, we have, this is the only new part of this particular version of this kit. The only thing that's really unique in terms of plastic for this kit is our new pilot figure here. is just standing holding the helmet, but we do have the original pilot figure also included as well. So you do have both versions, you could use them if you want. I do think the new one's pretty cool, wearing like the actual pilot normal suit. Uh, holding his helmet there is pretty nice. We have our action base adapter here as well. And then we have a bunch of different hand options here. These work the same as like the recent Master Grade gym hands where they're just swappable finger types. So we have closed fists, which I've got on the kid there at the moment. Uh, open hands here, just outstretched fingers. Holding hands here for holding the beam sabers. And then trigger finger hands for holding the rifle. And you've got one of those each for the left and the right side. We also have these parts for the hands when the kit is transformed. You'll use these uh, in place of the other fingers. We've got these beam saber effect parts, two short and two long, and it's kind of like rectangular age style shape. And we've got the shield, not very big, not very substantial. This just plugs onto the back of the arm, and it's just kind of there. It's not really too much to that. And then we've got the beam rifle, also pretty cool design. I like the shape of this. I like how the handle is like enclosed here between these parts there on the top and bottom. And it's just overall pretty interesting shaped beam rifle. I like it. It's definitely a cool take on that and rather than your normal beam rifle that we see in a lot of kit mobile suit designs. We've got some photo stickers here, some of which I used and some of which I didn't use. These ones go over the top of clear parts, so I didn't bother using those. And then these ones which go behind the clear parts, this one which goes behind the big A in the chest, and these ones which go behind the eyes. I'll use those later once the kit is painted, but you can see that part in there behind the chest does help to make that uh, clear green part to glow pretty nicely. We do also have this sheet of sticker decals. I guess this is another thing that would be specific only for this version if you do want to use these, but as you guys know, I typically prefer water slides, uh, so I didn't really bother putting any of these on there. Mostly just ca uh, caution markings and things like that, but we do have like these gray striping bits. Those go on the wings. I'll just show you here on the manual. Those would go like up here on the wings. So that would help to break up the monotony of all the white a little bit. Here you can see just in this painted model how it's going to look like all panel lined as well. And then we have a pretty good sized sheet of dry transfers here as well. This big red wolf head logo there, and then some other logos and just caution markings and things like that that will go around on the mobile suit as well. All right, so let's check out some of the articulation. First of all, just I want to appreciate how cool this head is. The head looks just really nice there, all in white with the dark gray, and then just the little tiny bits of green there around like the head cameras, and the eyes looks really nice. The head articulation will go back to there, which is pretty good, pretty good angle looking up and then down plenty as far as you'd really need. The shoulder joint is able to slide out a little bit there so you can get a pretty good forward bend out of that. Of course, these wing bits here on the side will move back and forth and also rotate there and then the wing is able to separate out like that as well, mostly for the transformation, but you can use that just like in mobile suit mode as well. Also, this flap on the side of the shoulder will move up and down and the shoulder armor itself will move up along with the arm. And you're able to move the arm up pretty far like that, but it doesn't stay there. It's gonna kind of like move back down because it's just on a poly cap there inside the side of the torso. So the arm will go more, more than 90 degrees, but not too much more. Otherwise, the arm is gonna work very normally, just a rotation at the top, a double jointed elbow here. With this little part on the back of the arm, also able to move a little bit there as well by the elbow. And the hand is just on a ball joint at the base, but then there's also, you can also move it here at the top. This will rotate. You can see like the gray part for the wrist and this white part for the top of the hand, the main part of the hand will move separately, which kind of can be annoying when you're trying to get them lined back up again. It's a little bit hard to do so. And then the thumb is just on a ball joint at the base, and then there is one little joint in the middle of the thumb for moving that just a tiny bit. The torso articulation is going to suffer a little bit just due to the transformation, but we do have a little bit of forward and back 
bend here and then side to side also a little bit there. Rotation, of course, not going to be a problem. Front skirts will be able to move up to about there. That's going to be about it, but it should be more than plenty. Side skirts also able to move up all the way up to the side, so those won't get in the way of anything at all. The little winglet on those will also move, again, just mostly for the transformation. On the back skirt, this whole thing moves up and down like so, and the side bits, which hold the beam saber handles in there, will also move independently. Just this, these little bits of off-white and that kind of light cream color really work to break up the colors here around the center of the kit as well. For the legs, we have rotation there at the top and a nice double joint in the knee. And it's a little bit goofy just, again, because of the transformation. So kind of how that works. And then just like the knee armor is just kind of like there by itself, just kind of like floating like that. It's a little bit weird, but the bend on the knee is really nice. Because of the transformation, getting it back to normal is a little bit weird because then it's kind of like folding in the wrong way. Kind of similar to like a lot of wing kits. Uh, we'll have that as well. And then down here at the ankles, this front armor will move up and down a little bit there at the bottom, moves separately. The ankles move side to side at two points, one above and one below, so you're able to get a really nice bend there at the ankle. It should be more than enough. The toe is able to point down plenty again because of the transformation, but that should make aerial posing really nice. The foot in general will move forward to there, back to there, all pretty nice up underneath the foot. Uh, again, it's not really super detailed, but again, just because of the transformation. So with that, let's see how it is going to look transformed, and here we go. Right, so here it is transformed, and the transformation is a little bit tricky. It takes a little bit of time, but as long as you followed the manual, it's really not all that bad. And I do think it ends up looking pretty cool. Of course, it does still pretty much kind of have the look of just like a folded up Gundam, but it's a little bit hidden in the fact that I like how the arms kind of actually like join in the hands. It kind of looks like the hands are like holding on to the back of the legs. And so just the way that it's folded up, I think kind of conceals that, and especially with the fact of like the gun being plugged into the front of the chest there out the front of it. Uh, does help to kind of hide the shape of the chest and the head there on the front. So if you're the kind of person who does like transforming kits and likes to like have them displayed transformed, I think this is definitely one of the ones that's going to look uh, pretty cool just displayed transformed like this. It has a really kind of like Star Fox, I want to say, like jet kind of shape to it. That's what it kind of reminds me of in a way. I don't know if anyone else really sees that or it could be wrong. It could be closer to something else, but that's the first thing that comes to my mind anyway. But it's it's pretty cool in its transformed state and I don't really say that too often. But I think I do still prefer it, of course, in mobile suit mode. And I have to say that this is a opinion that will really only be applicable to this version of the kit. Uh, but Man, even all in white, this kit just looks really cool, just with the wings off the shoulders and everything. And just the articulation of it is quite good. So being able to do like really cool dynamic poses with it, and I think the wings do add a really nice dynamic feature to uh, the posing of this. And they don't really get in the way or anything. You would think that they kind of would, like if you said like, oh, we're gonna have wings hanging off uh, the front and back of the shoulders. It seems like that would kind of get in the way of stuff, but they don't really don't, and they really add a lot to the overall posing of this. I think it looks really cool, even all in white. I will say though that the holding hand meant for the beam saber handles doesn't really hold it very well so I maybe use a little bit of tack or something in there in the hand just to help it hold the beam saber handle a little bit more firmly. It seems like it's kind of like made especially for that but for some reason the, it's just not quite the right size so it doesn't quite fit in there perfectly. And other than that, I think there's really not going to be too much I can say really negative about this kit. This is a pretty solid master grade, considering that it's a like fully transforming kit. It's relatively solid. I've noticed that if you have the shoulders like popped out a little bit, then they get a little bit weak, but that's just because they need to be just popped in all the way. Uh, there's a little latch in there in the shoulder that's part of the transformation gimmick. I uh, just need to make sure that that's in there and the shoulders are plenty sturdy enough to hold up the rifle here, as you can see. And overall, the kit, yeah, it's pretty solid. The knee articulation is also a little bit funky, but again, just kind of work around it and you can get this kit posed up in some really, really nice poses. It looks great. I imagine if you don't like the all white, if you do like just the regular version, which is kind of more traditional Gundam colors of red, white, yellow, blue, um, then of course the regular version will also be really cool. I have to say, pretty impressed with this kit, so I can definitely recommend it. Now, if you want to pay the extra for this premium Bandai version, uh, then of course I would really probably only recommend that for people who don't paint. If you wanted a white uh, color aged to normal, then you know go for the P Bandai kits, or if you really, really want that little pilot figure, then go for it. Otherwise, I mean, if you want a white one, you can just get the regular kit and just paint it white. That's pretty much it. So highly recommended kit. And I have to say a big thank you to Samurai Buyer. And Samurai Buyer actually sent me this kit. So thank you to them. If you guys are interested, you can check out the link to their site down below. Uh, and just see the kind of stuff that they have there. Gundam stuff and all sorts of stuff from Japan. 
But I hope this review has been helpful for you guys. This is the first Master Grade Age kit that I've ever reviewed, and although there's really only a few of them. Uh, I do also have the Master Grade Age 1 Sparrow, and I should review that here for you guys. Uh, when I get the chance, I'll try to get to that sooner than later. But for now, guys, leave any other further questions and comments down below, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time.